but let's talk about what polar coordinates look like again. Um, so I'm going to give an example. If I wanted to graph on the polar coordinate plane the point 5, um, 150 degrees, here is my pole in the center, and this is my polar axis. So I open up 150 degrees. So notice it's labeled here. Here's the 150 degree angle. And then from the pole on that angle marker, I go five, uh, five units. So one, two, three, four, five. Notice each of those circles um, is one of my units. Okay. If there's a negative number, like if I were doing negative five, 150 degrees, that means I still open to the 150 degree angle. But on that line, notice how it goes all the way through. From the pole, I go negative 5. So I go the opposite direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So you can see the difference there between having a positive and a negative. You stay on that same line, but you go either towards your angle or away from it. We are going to work on converting from Cartesian coordinates, the way we're used to seeing it, into polar coordinates. Okay, so let's take a look at what we do. Um, we have been using these before. Okay, we've used these in our previous lessons. That r is plus or minus the square root of x squared plus y squared for our points x comma y. Tangent theta is y over x. So in order to put this into polar coordinates, we need to find r and we need to find theta. So let's start by finding r. So r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now notice it has plus or minus here. That's because we talked about, remember, you can have the same point um, depending on what angle you have, if you go the positive or negative direction. So one thing you'll want to do here is make sure you plot the point 1, 4, so that you know what quadrant you need to end up in. Okay, so that when you find your theta, you know where your angle needs to be. And there's actually two possible answers to this question. I'll do the more obvious one, and then we'll talk about what your cancer could also be. So let's go ahead and find r. Um, it's the square root of x squared plus y squared. So here's my x and my y. So I go 1 squared plus 4 squared gives me 1 plus 16 is the square root of 17. Now, I have the option of plus or minus there. Let's find our theta, and then we'll talk about which one we would like to use. For theta, you use the fact that tangent theta is equal to y over x. So we set that up. Make sure you keep your y's and x's straight. That can be a common error. y over x would be 4 over 1. To find that, we do the inverse tangent of both sides. Now remember, this is why we plotted our point. This one's going to come out OK, but um, inverse tangent, your calculator will give you your answer somewhere between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So you do need to watch um, to see where your angle actually is. I would use my calculator for that. Um, I'm doing degrees. You can answer the question in radians if you choose to. Okay, so I just take out my calculator. I do the inverse tangent of 4, and I get about 76 degrees for my answer. I went ahead and rounded to the nearest degree. Okay, what you want to do is double check and say, is that the quadrant I needed to be in? The point 14 was in quadrant 1, and 76 degrees is between 0 and 90. So it would indeed be in quadrant 1 also. So my answer for r theta would be positive root 17, 76 degrees. Now we talked about there, there could be another possible answer. Well, remember that tangent is not only positive in this quadrant, but it's also positive in quadrant 3. Okay, so I could find the angle that's 76 degrees away from my axis here by going 180 plus 76, and I get 256. Okay, you'll say, well, that's in the wrong quadrant. We need it to be up here. But remember, with polar coordinates, I can put my 256 degree angle and then just stay instead of going a positive root 17 and you know, ending up here, I go a negative root 17 and end up in the first quadrant. Okay, so that's something kind of tricky. These are actually both possible correct answers. Most of the time, 
If you asked for one, they would give you this one. But that's also another possible correct answer to this question. That's why we have the plus or minus here, because we could go with this angle in our quadrant we want and a positive number, or the angle in this quadrant and do the negative so that we're going back up. Kind of crazy. All right, so this is another example of why it's important. <laughs> Notice this is almost the same question, but it's negative 1 and negative 4. So let me plot that point in the on the xy coordinate plane so we know where we need to be. We need to get an answer in the third quadrant. Okay, so again, we find our r. It's the square root. Again, we have the option of plus or minus. just depends on where we want to end up. Okay. Um, again, we get 1 plus 16 or the square root of 17. Okay, that's our, our r. Again, our point needs to end up being r comma theta. To find our theta, again, we set up the tangent theta is equal to y over x, so negative 4 over negative 1. So again, we get that tangent theta is 4. Now, if we do the inverse tangent of both sides, we end up with theta is the inverse tangent of 4. And if you put that into your calculator, again, you will get 76 degrees. Okay, so you'll want to watch because if I go, well, 76 degree angle would be here somewhere. Okay, it would be in the first quadrant, and my answer needs to be here. All right, so likely what you would do is say, well, then I need the angle down here in this quadrant instead because, again, tangent is positive in first and third. So you would find your angle. It's 76 degrees past 180 which again puts us at 256 degrees. So you would say, well, then my answer is the positive square root of 17, 256 degrees. I could open to that angle and go a positive distance into that quadrant. But again, we have the option of doing the negative distance. We would just have to use our 76 degree angle. If we open up to 76 degrees and then go negative at 17, we end up in the same place. Again, more than likely you would answer this, but these are both possible answers. All right, next, the point zero three. Well, this one is a little, sorry about that. This one is a little easier to work with, okay? Zero three, we, if we plotted this point, we go zero and up one, two, three. Okay, now remember in our polar coordinates, r theta, r is our distance, theta is the angle. Well, if we're here, we've opened up to 90 degrees. So we know we have a 90 degree angle. Um, and r, how far did we go at that angle? We went a distance of 3. Now, so that one's pretty quick and easy. You can still go through the steps. You can say, well, tangent theta is y over x. So we get 3 over 0, which is undefined. Anytime you have 0 in the denominator, it's undefined. So then you would have to go, well, where is tangent undefined? It's undefined here, and it's also undefined here. At every pi over 2, it's undefined. Okay, so I actually have two possible answers here. I could have 3 and 90, or I could even open up to 270 and go a distance of negative 3, right? Because if I opened up 270 degrees and here's my axis and I go a negative distance 3, I end up in that same place. Okay, so again, two possible answers. More than likely, you'd give this one. Um, you're asking, how did I find my r? Well, I can just, it's on an axis. I can just count it. You could still do the x squared plus y squared, okay? And that would work out for you. You would get 0 plus 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. Again, it's positive or negative 3, depending on whether you use that 90 degree angle and go in the positive direction or go clear around to 270 and go in the negative direction. All right, so here is another. Again, always, even if it's just a little sketch, plot your point so you know what, quad what quadrant you need to end up in. So 6, th negative 3 would put me in this quadrant. Quadrant 4 is where I need to end up. 
and then work on finding your values. So r is plus or minus 6 squared plus negative 3 squared. That gives me 36 plus 9 or the square root of 45. Now that can be simplified. 45 does not have a whole number square root, but they want you to simplify your radicals. So if you can separate this into a perfect square, you need to, and we can. 45 is 9 times 5, and we can take the square root of 9. It is 3. The square root of 5 is not a whole number, so we leave it there. So our answer for r is 3 root 5 or negative 3 root 5. Okay. For theta, we set it up. Tangent theta equals y over x, so negative 3 over 6. We do the inverse tangent of both sides. Okay, and we get theta equals, and if you do the inverse tangent of negative 3 sixths or negative 1 half, you are going to get about negative 26.6. Okay, now remember, we wanted to end up in this quadrant, so what would that angle be? Negative 26.6. So if we take 360 minus 26.6, we get 333.4. Okay, so one answer is positive 3 root 5, 333.4 degrees. Okay, so there's one of my answers. I could open up to 333.4 and go the positive direction 3 root 5. Again, since tangent is negative, this was a negative tangent in both the fourth and the second quadrant, we could also find the angle here that's 26.6 degrees away from our axis in the second quadrant. To do that we would take 180 minus 26.6 and that gives us 153.4 so we could also do 153.4 and then go a negative 3 root 5. So our other possible answer is negative 3 root 5, 153.4. And you may not always be asked for both answers, but it's good to know that they are both possible. All right, this is our last one we're going to work on here. Okay. So we are going to change this to our theta form, polar coordinates. Again, we start by plotting the point so we know where we need to go. So negative 4, 4 would put me right there in the second quadrant. Okay, that's where we need to end up. Let's take a look. So our r is the square root of x squared plus y squared which in this case gives me 16 plus 16 or the square root of 32. Again, that's positive or negative. This also simplifies. We need to simplify our radicals. Um, 32 is the same as 16 times 2 and 16 has a square root. Okay, The square root of 16 is 4. Okay, so it can come out. The root 2 has to stay. So our simplified answer for root 32 is 4 times the square root of 2. All right. Now let's find our angle. So tangent theta equals y over x, so 4 over negative 4. So we have tangent theta equals negative 1. We do the inverse tangent of both sides to find our angle. And we know from our exact values that tangent is negative 1 at the 45 degree angles. In this case, if you use your calculator, it will tell you it's at negative 45 degrees, which is right here. Okay, but remember we wanted to be up here in this quadrant, right? So we want the angle 45 degrees away from our x-axis in the second quadrant. So if you just take 180 minus 45, you will get 
35. Okay, so one possible answer is positive 4 root 2, 135 degrees. Okay, that's our most likely answer. The other thing we can do is do a negative 4 root 2 and, and start in this quadrant. So what would this angle be? Well, it's 45 degrees away from 360. So we take 360 minus 45. And we get 315. So we could also go 315 degrees and then go in the negative direction. We would still end up in that quadrant. Okay, so again, probably your first answer would be here, but this is also a possible answer. And it's good to see both so that we know. All right, so I lied. I had one more example hanging out there, but you can turn the video off if you're good to go. <laughs> okay, well, again, what we would do is first plot this. So negative 2, negative 2 root 3 would put us in this quadrant down here. Um, our r is the square root of negative 2 squared plus negative 2 root 3 squared, which gives me 4 plus believe that 3 times 4 would be 12 or root 16 okay so the square root of 16 is 4 positive or negative 4 is possible for r let's find our theta tangent theta is y over x so negative 2 root 3 over negative 2 which negative divided by negative is a positive root 3. Now if you have those exact values memorized, you already know what angle this is. We do the inverse tangent of both sides. What angle has a tangent whoops, I lost my theta has a tangent of root 3? Well, hopefully you answered. It will tell you 60 degrees. But remember, we want to be down here in this quadrant. So 60 degrees is here, but if we're here in this quadrant, we want to be 60 degrees away from this axis. So we do 180 plus 60, which is 240 degrees. So we can open up 240 degrees and then go a positive distance of 4. So one answer is 4, 240. Okay. The other possible answer is negative 4 and 60 degrees. We could open up to 60 degrees and go a negative distance, 4. Okay, so that was the last example. So hopefully those will help you converting your Cartesian to polar coordinates.